everyone, it's Mr. J. Today I'm going to be showing you how to change your CMOS or BIOS battery out of your Asus EPC 1005HA. Now most Asus EPCs probably have the same battery. This is video is just for this particular model. A few things you're going to need, of course, your EPC, the new CMOS battery, couple screwdrivers, small screwdrivers, flathead, Phillips head, and I brought these two just in case. Now you're asking why am I changing the battery? Well on this particular laptop or mini PC the BIOS keeps on asking me at the beginning of boot up to change the date. Well, that typically happens when your battery is low or just is not working anymore. So that's why I'm changing out the CMOS or BIOS battery. Now this battery I picked up on eBay for about $6. I wouldn't pay anything else or, or anything more than about $6. Some people do it with their own. They buy a small button sized battery, which is exactly what this is in and then they do all the soldering and connecting themselves and that's just a lot of work for something that's as cheap as six dollars and in essence you're only going to save about a few dollars so I might just get one that's prepackaged and ready to go so we're going to go ahead and start I'm going to first take off the main battery go ahead and put in the unlocked positions it should just slide right out put that to the side and then you're going to take out your four retaining screws one two three four on each corner and there's also one screw inside underneath this memory RAM cover as well so we'll go ahead and start off with that one it should just pop off put that to the side now you can take off your memory chips if you want. You don't really have to. I'd do it just for good measure. Put it to the side and here's that little screw. Go ahead and take that out. And you're gonna go ahead and put that to the side as well. After that screw is taken out, you're gonna take out four main ones. And if you notice, these screws are actually sticking to my screwdriver like if it's a magnet. You're not supposed to use magnetic tools around electronics because it can mess it up. But all my small, small screwdrivers, I guess, are magnetized for a little bit. So it won't hurt that much, but you're not supposed to. Now I've taken off the four screws. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over, open it up. And now you're going to take off your keyboard. To take off the keyboard, there are four retaining clips inside the keyboard along the edge. If you look closely, you might be able to see it, but it's kind of difficult to see, but you'll be able to see it on your own. Now take your flathead screwdriver and just pop it in, get underneath, and you'll pry it up a little bit carefully. And what I'll do is I'll take another screwdriver and put underneath just to give it some leverage and I'll go ahead and see this has already come apart but there's some others probably stuck in there you're gonna take it off pop each one there's four one in each two in the middle one on each side and then your keyboard just lifts up and pulls forward towards the uh, screen portion and you want to do this carefully you don't want to tear or rip off the keyboard ribbon cable. Now to take this off you're going to loosen the clip on each side. Now you can use your flathead screwdriver or your small Phillips screwdriver, doesn't matter. You're just going to push it ju forward just a little bit. On 
on each side and the ribbon caver should just pop right out. And put that to the side. Now you've got some more screws to take off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now this one had a little do not remove, you'll avoid a factory warranty sticker on top so it might be covered. This is an old laptop that I've already extended or went way past the warranty so I don't care. You can go ahead and take off your screws. Now all the screws are taken off and you're going to pry open this top covering from the bottom so you can either use your fingernails or the really small flathead screwdriver and just get in between the plastic and you're going to pry it apart and you're going to do it a little bit carefully. It's on by plastic clips and it just pops off. Just run your fingers along pop it off it should pop off like so now when you take it apart there's still one cable attached as you can see you don't want to pull it off you don't have to take it off at its, for this uh, job but if you want to you could do it at the beginning just pull this up back and pull it out but for this process you don't really have to as you can see that's what your motherboard looks like with your hard drive and other components. Just turn this around, lay it to the side like that. And on the laptop's left side, you'll find the BIOS, the old BIOS CMOS battery. Here's a new one, which will be going in. Now you can just take this circuit, just move it to the side, and you can pull this off. It's probably stuck on there by a little bit of glue or double sided tape. and. So that is a short cable, so you can pull it out with your fingers, or if you can't get it, use your screwdriver to pry it off the plastic, like so. Pops out just like that. So this is pretty much garbage. Here's your new one. Pop that in its place. This is a little difficult for some reason. Well, here we go, we got it back in. Tuck this inside, like so. Put the circuit board back where it laid. And that's fine. Now you're gonna put everything back together. Put this chassis cover back on. And make sure everything clips into place. Pinch it all around, push it down. Then you're going to put your screws back on. Now have all these screws back on, you're going to put your keyboard back on. The easiest way to do that is to make sure this is out. Push this down. 
and just going to slide the ribbon cable back in and thin all the way. Have one finger holding in place and just push the tabs on each side with your screwdriver. So it's in. And as you can see, it's in. And put the keyboard back in, bottom in first, lay it down, push it down, it should pop back in place. Okay. Go ahead and close the laptop or mini PC. And then you're going to go ahead and put your exterior retaining screws back on. The center screw where the RAM memory was put. Go ahead and put that one back in. Take your RAM, pop it back into place. RAM cover. Thing screwed back in. Battery. All the physical work is done. Go ahead, test it out, turn it back on. Now again, I chose to change out my battery because the BIOS would not boot up all the way. Kept on asking me to change the date and time, which will probably do that, which it does. And so I have to go into my BIOS, change the date and time, and it should work uh, like normal every time now with the new battery. And that's it. Thank you for watching.